In a previous project, I showed you how to build your own electric longboard. The heart of the system consists of a so-called brushless DC motor and an ESC, aka an electric speed controller. Such setups can also be found when you want to build a quadrocopter or for example inside your DVD drive or your hard disk. So in this video, let's find out how those motors and ECs work together and what you should be aware of if you want to build a project around them. Let's get started. First of all, let's have a look at a similar motor type to get a basic understanding of what is going on. DC motors, like the name implies, use direct current in either polarity to create a rotary movement. But since looking at them from the outside pretty much explains nothing, I used my rotary tool with a cutting wheel to firstly open up the back and afterwards remove the front gear in order to take the whole construction apart. Inside the metal case, we can see two permanent magnets with opposing polarity, also known as the stator, because they stay in place. The rotating parts that are removed is called a rotor and consists in this case of five coils that are connected to a commutator, which is divided in five equal parts. To keep it a bit simpler though, I reduced the number of coils and commutator parts to only two in this diagram. The last remaining components of this motor are two carbon brushes, which connect our DC voltage to the commutator and thus the coils. Now if I apply a voltage, current starts flowing through them, which creates an opposing magnetic field since they are connected in series and have a reverse winding direction. The results are then obvious. The same magnetic polarity creates a force that pushes the coils away while the other side of the stator attracts them. But just before reaching their final position, the carbon brushes reach the other half of the commutator and reverse the magnetic polarity of the coils, which get pushed away again, and then again, and so on. And just like that the rotation is created. Brushless motors use a similar principle, but on the other hand change a couple of things around to make it more appealing for certain applications. Again, let's firstly have a look inside this beast motor in order to find out how it functions. This time the rotor consists of four permanent magnets with alternating opposing polarities and this data consists of 12 coils which utilize the metal case as a heatsink to improve their lifespan. But to keep it simple, once again, let's use one magnet with six coils in this diagram. The three coil pairs, which are also connected in series and with a reverse winding direction, are bound together through a star connection, which is not a surprise because the label of my motor already said so. Now we need to energize two coil pairs, one after the other, in these six steps to create a complete rotation of the rotor. While the DC motor used the mechanical principle of a commutator to create a rotating field, the brushless motor uses an electrical one, also called the ESC. You can get different variations with for example software to program them and all kinds of different features, but in the end they all do the same minimum. By applying a control voltage to the inputs, aka the yellow wire, I can set two reference points which are basically just different length of a voltage burst in order to adjust the frequency in which a six steps for one complete rotation repeats. Obviously, a higher frequency means less time for one rotation and thus a higher RPM. The three states of the outputs are high, low and floating, which is realized through an array of P-channel and N-channel MOSFETs. The number of parallel MOSFETs for one output, in this case six of them, directly determines how much current your driver can handle. More of them means more current and thus your motor can be more powerful but the price also increases. And the overall current draw is also determined by the load which is attached to the shaft, the amount of voltage applied to the ESC and also regulated by a pulse width modulation of the different output states. Ok, getting back to the practical example. If I set a constant frequency of around 65Hz, I can use my tachometer to measure an RPM of around 1740. 
If I divide that by 60, I get a frequency of only half the original one. But why? The reason is the doubled number of coils and especially the permanent magnets, which cause a lower RPM, but on the other hand a bigger torque. That is also the reason why outrunner brushless motors are preferred when high torsional moments are necessary. Due to more space on the outside, they simply can accommodate a higher amount of magnets and thus, like I already said, they can achieve a lower RPM and a higher torque at the same frequency. At the end, let's talk about the KV rating, which stands for RPM per volt applied. Let's use a 7.4 and 11.1 volt battery as an example. With the 520 kV motor, I reached a maximum RPM of 3750 and 5644, while with the 920 kV one, I reached a maximum of 6780 and 10500. So it is true that with a higher kV rating, you get more RPM. And by calculating with the ratings, we get values which are definitely close enough to reality. But in the end, it's not mainly about the voltage which determines the rotation speeds, it's about a higher frequency of the ESC that can be achieved with a higher voltage and depends on the characteristic properties of the motor. And with that being said, you already know quite a bit about brushless motors and their ESC. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, consider supporting me through my Patreon campaign in order to keep such videos coming, stay creative and I will see you next time.